This story is about my grandmother, and her name is Grandma Gorman, and she used to, I'm from Chicago, and, and I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but she used to make us uh, deep dish pizzas on Easter, and, um, and we'd ask her, it was so good, you know? She had like three different kinds, and it was like, you know, like huge, you know, like towering pizza, and, um, and she would, we, you know, what's the recipe, you know, oh, a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and then she died. So now, you know, I, I have to remember what it tasted like and, and, and figure out what, how she would have done it by researching a lot of different deep dish pizza recipes. And um, this is what I came up with. So I hope it's accurate. I hope she thinks it's accurate. And, uh, and here we go. How to make Grandma Gorman's Easter Sunday Chicago style deep dish pizza. Woo! Bring bad boy his hard-boiled eggs and his toast. Stiff and just short of burn, he can butter it himself. And when he says where's his tea, tell him to hold his horses before he has a stroke. <laughs> Start boiling the water. There's nothing you don't begin without first putting a pot on to boil, even if it's just for tea. You'll let that water boil like it's coming from the sewer and you're trying to purify it. <laughs> Most people never thought of tea being in a burnt state unless they've had yours. You throw a Lipton bag in it and call it a day. It always, always burns the tongues of your grandchildren who have no concept of time or patience and never learn to just wait for it to cool. Bad Boy was never for children and can't sit through one dinner with the grandchildren without banging his cane on all the cat hair filled furniture in your house. Bang, boom. You have a lot more patience for them. You know they're just kids. You like to play gin rummy with them if you can ever get the food ready and get to the house. Now you are ready. Get your apron, sitting on the step stool chair. You've had the same apron since you made it in the 70s. Thin white cotton with the baby blue trim, no pockets, one over your shapeless floral house dresses you always wear. You cook all the time, but that apron, after 20 years, has no stains. So let's go, make your sauce. Get out your garlic and cut it into fat chunks. Throw your vegetable oil in the pan. Throw your garlic in the pan, stir it around, wait till it pops. All day yesterday you were at the Jewel and on the way there you kept yelling at Bad Boy to slow down. He's driving like a goddamn maniac, going to get you both killed. Watch it, you yell. I said, watch it, you yell. He yells back, stop hollering. After 50 years, you consider divorce. <laughs> you consider going back to split Croatia, where you, we, which you couldn't go back to because you have to be there a first time to go back. <laughs> but didn't somebody call it the most beautiful island in the world? And anyway, your first husband currently resides there, if he did in fact to live, live to be 138, with the wife and family of six back home he never told you about when he married you. <laughs> Who knows, you think? With any luck, maybe the wife kicked off, you think? It'd be good to reunite with the man your daughter and grandchildren remind you of every time you see them, the older and darker and hairier they get. <laughs> It'd be good to reunite with him and kill him. You bought everything at the store, even though you probably have everything at home already since you stocked the kitchen like a bomb shelter. It reminds you of your canning days. After you die, people talk of your canning. That's a rare talent, everybody says, canning jam and sardines for winter and not killing everybody in the house. Get out your yellow onion, get out your vegetable oil, your can of tomato paste, your can of crushed tomatoes. Get out your green peppers, chop them up, throw them in with your salt and pepper, your dried oregano. Thicken it with cornstarch, thin it out with water. Thicken it with cornstarch, thin it out with water. <laughs> throw the lid on, turn down the heat, start your dough. Two packages of rapid rise, dry yeast, flour, cornmeal, cornstarch, olive oil, two things of Crisco, but of course you already have a closet dedicated to Crisco. <laughs> Never mind that, get out the mixer, it's already 10 o'clock, we gotta get going here. Throw about two cups of the leftover tea water that's been cooling and that yeast in a bowl. Mix it up. Now put in the vegetable oil and the olive oil, each half a cup, half a cup of cornmeal, a little over two cups of flour. Beat it until you hear Bad Boy tell you to knock it off, his plate full of toasted crumbs left at the table where he spilled a bit of his tea, because he's a Meshuggah mensch. But that's why the oil cloth is there. You yell right back, shut up, Gorman. Where's your dough hook? You need your dough hook, you just had it. Where is it? Check under the sink. Pots and pans, clean rags, ripped up from old towels, with duck heads you knitted at the top when your back was better. 
Check that the cabinet, one over. More pots, more pans. Check the silverware drawer. Not that one, the one over next to it. There's your dough hook. Put it in the mixer. Pour some more flour in the bowl, a little over two cups. You can't work the rest of that dough with your hands, so don't even try it. That's why you have what came with your mixer in the first place when you bought it 30 years ago. <laughs> Throw your dough on the counter. Every time you do this, it reminds you of when Bad Boy would come home from Budweiser on paycheck day. Put it on the mahogany, you'd say. Put it on the buffet. Get your large metal bowl out and cover up your bowl with it or it won't double. Put the oven on 475. Sit down. Let the sweat dry from your face and chest. You swear you never stopped menopause even though you were 83. <laughs> you are not Croatian, but you look more Slavic than your first husband who, dead or alive, currently resides with the family back home in Croatia who never told you about in a language that you and your daughter once knew fluently but have long since rejected. You look naturally war-torn and so does your daughter and so do your grandkids. People will constantly come up to them and ask them what they've always asked you. What's wrong? <laughs> I can tell you've had a hard life. You look tired. You're so sad looking. Are you upset? You and your daughter and your grandkids know everything was fine until they asked. That's just how you look. <laughs> Watch the bald, fat back of Bad Boy's head and neck rolls as he snores in his chair. Baseball always conks him out. The dough is rising. Get to the kitchen, punch it down. Stand there. Let it rise again. Punch it down again. Grab a couple of those cake pans. Get a little oil on your fingers and line the pans with your dough. Thin, not thick. Now take everything out of the fridge. You're going to layer it like this. Mozzarella, your sauce that's been sitting on the stove with the canned tomato paste, onion, oregano and green pepper, salt and pepper and garlic and big chopped up chunks and now your Italian sausage and mushrooms with some Crisco sprinkled on top. Put the cake pans in the oven. You don't have to set the timer for, for 35 minutes. You know when to take it out. One thing out of the way. Thank you.